Hey, you three and four. So first of all, well done on last week's work. Your setting descriptions were brilliant. Uh, well done for working so hard. Um, I'm really excited about this week's model because uh, the one that's based on the short movie of Ruckus. Ruckus actually means fight. So actually the ruckus is between the two brothers, isn't it? And I thought it was a really good choice. And we get to use lots of good setting descriptions. And also it's a great opportunity to consolidate using dialogue and punctuating it properly using inverted commas to move the story forward. Okay, which is actually a year five, six skill. So let's go for it. All right, so um, let's have a look at our success criteria. We've got use front and verbs of time, manner, and place. Use a range of conjunctions. So we've got our fanboys, for and nor, but or yet so. Coordinating both sides of the sentence are of equal value. And then we've got our subordinating if, since, as, when, although, while, after, before, until, because. That's when the second part of the sentence, if the conjunction's in the middle, is of less importance. Okay? We're going to use our speech marks. Remember to put your speech marks before your speech and after your speech, after the punctuation. Show, not tell sentences. Don't tell your reader what someone's feeling. Show them what they're feeling by what they're doing. And our challenge is to use our non-finite clauses, which I know you did earlier in the week. Okay, brilliant. So I know my success criteria, like the back of my hand. I'm going to make sure I use those. My mission is to write a dialogue and conversation between the two brothers. Let's have a little go. So first of all, I'm going to describe what the brothers are known for, because I want to set the scene. Now, if you're famous for something, you're really well known. If you're infamous, then you are well known for something bad. So I'm going to go for infamous in criminal, criminal circles. What do I put after my front of that verbial? A comma. Infamous in criminal, criminal circus circles. The two brawling brothers, so brawl means a fight, which is the same as ruckus, had been, nice bit of past perfect tense, not on my success criteria, but we should be trying to use it at all times anyway. The two brawling brothers had been in the precious gemstone business. Oh, actually, I'm going to change that. Business doesn't sound quite what right. I want to change it to thieving trade. Use a more interesting adjective. Thieving, thieving trade for years. So that gives us some perspective on the characters first. Now then, if they are brothers and they've been selling loads of jewels, then they're going to have lots of illegal stuff in their past, aren't they? So I could write with a terrible past or with a secret criminal past. I'm gonna go with, with many illegal sales behind them. And I'm gonna put a little, front of, you, can put, you can put an adverbial in the middle too. Unsurprisingly, jewelry was their speciality. Because if they're, if they're stealing gemstones they're probably going to make jewelry out of them aren't they because that's what people want to buy them for okay uh now who might buy these kinds of things i'm going to go for famous celebrities famous celebrities walked red carpets now how do people walk red carpets i'm going to imagine myself walking red carpets i'm going to go for proudly as my adverb proudly with no idea of the history of their now I could say jewelry or their object, but I want to make use a bit of alliteration. So I'm going to go for tainted, which means ruined, treasures, tainted treasures. It's also a bit of an oxymoron because you're putting two things together. Usually treasures are nice things. So saying tainted treasures is a bit of an oxymoron. Now let's get to the desert. Uh, front of our a place, I'm going to go for all around the desert. One S in desert, silly Mr. Lawson kept putting two, but that's dessert. Desert is one S. Now, I want to describe the setting as well, because even if it's dialogue, he still wants to describe the setting. I'm going to say the air was thick with anticipation. Now, that's a metaphor. Anticipation means something's going to happen. Is the air really thick with anticipation? No. So it's a metaphor. Full stop. Uh, punchy opening sentence. Now, how might someone look if they were thinking about stealing a gemstone? I'm going to say they're going to look really determined. So I'm going to write... With steely determination in his eyes, I'm going to talk about one of them first. What am I going to call him? I'm going to call him Enrique. Enrique, don't know where I got that name from. 
knew, oh, wrong kind of knew, knew the moment had arrived. I've just realized I haven't met my challenge yet. I want to use some non-finite clauses. What might he be doing when he knew the moment had arrived? Hmm, he might be picking his nails, he might be scanning the desert, or he could be smoking one of his cigars. So I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna use the verb sm puffing, because that's another word for smoking, still quietly puffing on a filthy Cuban cigar. Enrique knew the moment had arrived. That's why it's so important that you go skip line so you can edit, you can add in a non-finite clause. With steely determination in his eyes, that is my non-finite clause. Still puffing quietly on a filthy Cuban cigar, comma, Enrique knew the moment had arrived. Okay, now I'm gonna use some dialogue, so I'm gonna start a new line. Speech mark, what's he gonna say? He's get, him and his brother, they're gonna take the mickey out of each other all the time. So I'm gonna say that the brother's gonna to say to the other brother that he's old. So I'm gonna go, catch you later, old man. And he's saying it quite loudly, so I'm gonna put an exclamation mark. Speech mark goes after the exclamation mark. He, how did he say it? Did he whisper it? Did he shout it? He cried. He cried it out to his brother. He cried. Ooh, what was he doing at the time? He was leaping off the rock into the train. Do you remember that part of the clip where, where he leaps off the mountain? Uh, not the crane, onto the train. Catch you later, old man, he cried. As, using one of my conjunctions, he leapt from the, I'm not just going to say rock, I'm going to use a good adjective, craggy rock. through the roof of the carriage because he bursts through the carriage roof doesn't he hmm then i'm going to describe what his brother's doing jose i'm going to call him because that's a good for some reason i feel like these guys are spanish jose was not far behind and he's and as my conjunction and burst through the roof how did he burst through the roof just as forcefully equally as forcefully love a good adverb now jose is going to say something so i'm going to start a new speech mark you're not getting this one comma oh no exclamation mark more exciting i've got that ruby ear marked which means put aside for for the princess of sweden Jose, oh, funny spelling of Jose. Jose, now what did he do? I'm going to say that he proclaimed it. And how did he proclaim it? He proclaimed it hastily, which means quickly. Jose hastily proclaimed, and he's returning what he said in return. Stalemate. Mm, stalemate, short, punchy sentence, a bit like what we looked at last week to give it more impact. Stalemate. Now, what have I not used yet? I've used some good front stuff verbials. I've used some conjunctions. I've used speech marks. I've used my non-finite clause. I need to use some more probably, but I also need to use... I need to move that there. Need to use... Uh, showing not telling sentences. So what would they be doing which showed that they were rivals? If you look at, if you see two rivals together in the animal kingdom or humans, they probably stare at each other. So I'm gonna go for, they stared at each other like stag beetles about to fight to the death. So I used a simile, like two stag beetles about to fight to the death, okay? Now, how am I going to show that they're getting ready for a fight? Maybe their breath gets quicker. Their breath was quick and loud. And they, oh, what did they do? They came together. They started getting closer. I'm going to say they advanced menacingly towards the sacred stone, which we know is in the middle of them, don't we? Sacred stone, alliteration. What do we think we're describing? The ruby. Their breath was quick and loud, and they advanced menacingly towards the sacred stone. Oh, if you get ready for a fight, sometimes people crack their knuckles, don't they? So I'm going to go for their knuckles cracking in 
preparation. Da, da, da. Gonna leave you guys on another bit of ellipsis. Gonna leave you on another cliff edge. Obviously, you guys can write a lot more because you've got a lot more time. Just gonna underline that non finite clause again. Let me just read this through and check for any errors. Infamous in criminal circles, the two brawling brothers had been in the precious, precious gemstone thieving trade for years, with many illegal sales behind them. Unsurprisingly, jewellery was their speciality. Famous celebrities walked red carpets proudly with no idea of the history of their tainted treasures. All around the desert, the air was thick with anticipation, with steely determination in his eyes, still quietly puffing on a filthy Cuban cigar, Enrique knew the moment had arrived. Catch you later, old man, he cried as he leapt from the craggy rock through the roof of the carriage. Jose was not far behind and burst through the roof equally as forcefully. You're not getting this one. I've got that ruby earmarked for the Princess of Sweden, Jose hastily proclaimed in return. Stalemate. They stared at each other like stag beetles about to fight to the death. Their breath was quick and loud, and they advanced menacingly towards the sacred stone their knuckles cracking in preparation. All right, guys, so meet those success criteria. Don't forget about them. Have fun with it. Check the film if you need some reminders at home. And I look forward to hearing about them. And I look forward to your teachers uh, telling me about them. Feel free to send us pictures of your work. All right, good luck, guys.